Hello world, this is Konstantinos, and today it's the letter O of our journey into the solid principles, using Kotlin as our example language. Of course, you know as we've discussed in the previous video, those principles apply to all object-oriented languages. Now, open close principle has one of the most confusing names I have seen. I don't know about you, but whenever I read open closed, I cannot help but notice the duality in the title itself. How can something be open yet closed? The modern definition of this principle adds little to our understanding out of context. It reads, a software entity should be open for extension, but closed for modification. This is confusing, but the key is the out of context part. You see, this is a trap. Open and closed are not used in the regular meaning we have gotten used to in day-to-day -day speech. As we will see later, we will provide quite a bit of context and hopefully try to set some light into this principle. The first thing I thought when I first read this definition was to try to break it down into two parts, which helped to understand the goal, but it was still unclear as to how the goal would be achieved. So first, Open for extension. Okay, that could mean different things. That we can either add functionality by, you know, actually writing more code to a class. Or it could mean adding functionality by inheriting this class. Maybe it means polymorphism. Adding functionality by implementing abstractions with different implementations. Also, languages like Kotlin or Swift have extensions built in that allows us to add code to a class. Those are some ways I know on extending functionality. The second part, closed for modification, was a bit more confusing. Maybe it means I cannot change a classic source code at all, or maybe I can only refactor it but cannot add more functionality. So the question was clear. How can I change my code without changing my code? Robert Martin has called this principle the most important principle of object-oriented design. But he wasn't the first one who defined it. It was Bertrand Mayer who wrote about it in 1988 in his book Object-Oriented Software Construction. The general idea of this principle is kind of great. It tells you that you should write your code so that you will be able to add new functionality without changing the existing code. Okay, that prevents situations in which a change to one of your classes also requires you to adopt all depending classes. Therefore, to understand words open and closed, let's see them in context. First, Mayer's version. A class is closed since it may be compiled, stored in a library, baselined, and used by client classes. All right. So when he says closed, it means that a class is ready to ship to client classes, so it will not get changed again. I can understand that. But it is also open since any new class may use it as a parent, adding new features. When a descendant class is defined, there is no need to change the original or disturb its clients. Oh, I see what he did there. As we can see, Bertrand Mayer proposes to use inheritance in order to achieve this goal. And we now know years later, that inheritance is not a good technique and should be avoided when possible. As Joshua Bloch states in his book Effective Java, you should favor composition over inheritance, design for inheritance, or else prohibited. I will probably create a whole separate video on this concept since it's one of the most agreed upon in our industry and personally I have been bugged with huge inheritance trees in real-world applications, so I can tell you it can get really ugly. Mayer's definition is quite different from today's, and that's good, as we will see later. Robert Martin and others redefined the open close principle to the polymorphic open close principle. It uses abstractions instead of superclasses to allow different implementations which you can easily substitute without changing the code that uses them. The interfaces are closed for modifications and you can provide new implementations to extend the functionality of your software. 
That's what the open-closed principle is about. Polymorphism. Our class is closed because it depends on an abstraction and we'll never know directly what is behind the abstraction, who implements it, and how it does something or will do in the future. At the same time, it's open, since we can always change the derivative of the abstraction at any point, thus changing the class's functionality. Isn't that great? Think about it. It's a manifestation of the strength of object-oriented programming. I know I've made you wait long enough, so let's get right into an example. Today's scenario finds us playing a game, and in our game we have a player class that contains a health variable that starts with 100, he's healthy, and he can also get power-ups while playing the game. Let's see our power-ups. First of all, we have a power-up base type, which only contains the base power of the power-up. And then we have potion that extends power-up and it has base power of 15, and also has some fat, which will probably react negatively to the player's health. Next, we have energy drink. It has a base power of 20, but there's a 30% poison probability. This is not gonna be good. Finally, we have medical kit that has a base power of 10, but it contains iron and protein. So let's expand the get power up method. It gets a base power up as an argument, and inside we use a when statement to figure out what kind of potion or power up we got. So if it's a potion, we add the base power to our health and we subtract the fat. If it's an energy drink, we add the base power simply, but then check a random integer in case the, the probability of poisoning is real and our health drops to five if it is. That sounds real bad. Finally, we have the medical kit, which uh, multiplies the protein with the base power and finally adds the iron. So what is the problem here? Why does this class violate the open-close principle? Because it does. Let's say that somebody comes to you and asks you to implement a new power-up in the game. For example, pills. What you would have to do, except for creating a new pills class, that extends the base power-up class, you will also have to go into the player class and in the when statement, add the new case. For example, after the medical kit, you have to check is pills and you would have to implement it accordingly. This is a simple example and you may think to yourself, okay, well, this is not such a big problem, but think about down the line. Think that we would add 10 more power-ups along the way, maybe 20, maybe 100. How large will this when statement be? it can quickly get out of hand. So let's try to conform to the open-close principle in that case. Okay, let's try to apply the open-close principle in our case here. We said that we need to depend on abstractions, but now here we depend on actual concrete implementations. In each one of those is cases, Kotlin is actually smart casting to the respective subclass. So fat, is a member of Potion subclass, not of Power Up. But Kotlin knows that since we're checking for is, then it has to be of that type. So we're downcasting, essentially, into every subclass that we're checking. So this is not optimal as we saw before, because this does not scale well. We'd have a huge list of these statements down the line. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go to the Power Up base class and create an abstract function called um, consume. This will take the initial health, which is an integer, and also should return the int. Of course, every subclass needs to implement that function. Actually, I need this to be below. Perfect. And then we're going to copy and paste it into every other implementation here. Beautiful. So no compiler error for now. What we need to do is get simply call the consume function from here. Um, give it our health as initial health and also assign the return statement to our health. We can actually delete that. I'm not gonna delete it yet because I need to have reference in order to copy the functionality. First, let's take the, let's take the potion and uh, let's refactor. So plus, we don't need to power up anymore, neither here. And Kotlin has this nice feature where you can simply say equals and skip the return statement and the brackets. That's beautiful. So portion is done. 
Let's go next. Energy drink. This has a little bit more code, but nothing too fancy. Uh, what do we have here? Let's create a local variable health to return um, to the mint. And now we don't need to say, oops, we don't need to say int. We just have to assign it. And Kotlin will know that is the initial health plus the base power, brew rate, and also if that's the case here. Oh, here's a bug. This should not be greater than, this should be less than. And finally, return the health. Not the previous code inside that one, but whatever. Next, okay, energy drink is done. Next is the medical kit. This looks simpler. Again, initial health plus the power up multiplied by the protein plus the iron. Again, we can use that feature with the equals. Great. And finally, the pills. Let's take that and delete the rest later. Initial health plus and we can return that in line. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to use that helper to make everything private because we don't need it to be public anymore. Thank you very much. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, of course, we have to delete the when statement from here. We don't need that anymore. And look how clean that is. We can even optimize the imports. Our player class has cleaned up. It has depended on abstraction. More of that a little bit later. Let's first make everything private. Is there anything else that I've forgotten? I don't think so. Everything looks clean. So we've successfully transferred all the functionality from the get powered up method into the respective subclasses of power up. And also, now that we've depended on abstraction, we can see that we can add more realizations of that interface without ever changing the player. So if I were to add a new realization, for example, painkiller, yes, that's a PUBG reference. Let's say that it has 70 base power, I don't know. And the same implementation. No compiler errors in the player. It's immediately ready to go. So what we see here is that we've actually made our class open for extension by being able to implement many realizations of that interface but it's closed for modifications. We, we don't need to change anything inside here to get the functionality we need. And this scales pretty well. This can um, give us the power to scale and not worry about breaking anything in the player class. Congratulations for making it this far. If you followed up until this point, give yourself a pat in the back, since those concepts can be particularly tricky to grasp. If you feel like you were confused, don't worry. Watch the video again and try to mentally move in the refactoring before I do, instead of passively following the example. But once you understand the principle, you can start using it already. Sometimes I even see developers being too excited by open closed principle and the power of polymorphism, and they start using it everywhere they can. But should we do that? Should we apply the OCP everywhere just because we can? The answer is no. Why? Because abstractions come at a cost. Just like the single responsibility principle that we saw in the previous video, which in case you haven't seen will be linked below that like button, we should apply our abstractions at the strategically best places, the places where we expect change to happen. For example, in our player class, we would totally expect to have more power-ups in the future. Our game can take off, we would need to start with three power-ups to test the concept, but end up with dozens. So it makes absolute sense to tighten our security around our player class and hide the power-ups behind their interface. When we start applying the OCP everywhere, we would create unnecessary layers in our code, making it less readable, that will never be utilized, and that's what we call over-engineering, and it can bring more trouble down the road. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.